Hello booktube, Erica here, and today I wanted to do something that I've been meaning to do on this channel for ages. And that is my reading history. I think this may have been a tag at some point. It was a thing that people were doing a lot at some point, which is talking about kind of their history as a reader. Um, and I've always meant to do it and I just never had. So I'm doing it now. I am one of those people who has pretty much always been an avid reader. I, even when I was a toddler before I could actually read words, my father would read these like Mickey and Minnie, these Disney, um, you know, board books to me. And it got to a point where I would make him read them to me so many times that I had memorized them. So occasionally he would stop and I would keep going. Um, and that again was before I could even read. So my love of books goes way back. Um, it's really interesting because nobody else in my family are really big readers. A couple of my siblings kind of read a book here and there, but neither of my parents are very big readers and um, my siblings aren't either. So I'm kind of the only one in my family who has this problem here. <laughs> It's not a problem. It's wonderful. So going forward from that, I don't remember a ton about early elementary school and my reading. I do know that in my early days in grade school, I was always in like the advanced reading group, like when you're put into reading groups based on your reading level, I was always like in the top one. I remember that, but I don't remember a lot of what I read for pleasure then. And I know I was reading outside of school. I remember my parents taking us to the library a lot. I remember playing Oregon Trail on the computers at the library a lot. <laughs> um, but I don't remember what I was checking out from the library and what I was reading during that time. I start to remember again when I was about eight, so about third grade here in the US, when I became obsessed with the Babysitter's Club. Like, obsessed. I think one of my cousins or an aunt, some family member who I wasn't that close to, um, gave me a giant cardboard box full of babysitter clubs and Sweet Valley Twins books. Like giant, like the whole set of both of them. They, there were so many. And I fell in love with Babysitter's Club first. I read, I think I read all of those books at least once. I read them all. Um, and then I started reading Sweet Valley Twins and then I read Sweet Valley High. And then does anyone else remember the Sweet Valley Saga books? They were like, family sagas about the twins' families and their friends' families, like, going back to the 1800s and it, like, followed their families. It was crazy. They were probably really bad, but, um, <laughs> anyway, I read all of the Sweet Valley books. I read all of the Babysitter Club's books, and that's when I really remember starting to be, like, a very avid reader. And I remember, too, at that time, realizing that not all of my friends read like I did, and they were not all as interested in books as I was, which was a little bit upsetting to me. After that, or around that same period, I also really fell in love with Roald Dahl books. Um, I remember reading them myself, and then my little sister, who's about two years younger than me, and I shared a bedroom at the time, and I would try to make her let me read them out loud to her, like the witches and the twits and the BFG. Um, and she was not having it. And I really wanted to read them out loud and like do all the voices and stuff. And she was just like really not interested and it hurt my feelings so much <laughs> that no one else was as interested in these books as I was. So that was all around the same time, kind of middle to late elementary school. Middle school came along um, middle school in the U U.S., for those of you who are not familiar with the U.S. education system, is from about age 11 to 13. So basically the worst years of your life. <laughs> middle schoolers are horrible. It's Being a preteen is like the worst. Um, during middle school, I didn't read a ton, and it wasn't cool to read in middle school. Um, I was a pretty popular kid. I had a lot of friends, and... It was not cool to read in middle school. And so what I did read, I never talked about with anyone. Like I would read at home in my bedroom by myself and I would never tell any of my friends that I like read books for fun because it was not cool. Um, so I can't remember specifically what I was reading then. I do know that I wasn't reading as avidly as I had been the few years prior to that because again, not cool. Um, high school is a little bit of the same thing. In high school though, I started to kind of find my own voice a little bit more as I think most of us do and stop just trying to fit in even though that was still a major concern of mine. I also gained a little bit of 
freedom of expression of myself and what I enjoyed. Um, so I did read in high school. I had some friends who were also avid readers. Um, I read a lot of what would now be called YA fiction, but then it, YA wasn't really a term then. I know other people on booktube who are about my age have expressed this. Like YA, young adult was not really a thing that it was called. It, they were just books um, targeted to my age group, I guess. I mean, they're the same thing. It doesn't matter. Um, but I read a lot of Sarah Dessen, who remains my favorite YA author, just because her books impacted me so much when I was that age. I was still obsessed with Harry Potter. Um, the last Harry Potter book came out the summer I graduated high school, I think. So it was really timely for me. I'm one of those people who grew up with Harry, Harry and was about the same age as him throughout the series. So uh, that was a very vivid and emotional reading experience for me. It was the last Harry Potter book. I still didn't read a lot. I read some for school. I did not like assigned reading. I was not into that. Um, I have a video planned and it may have already gone up because I'm filming en masse for Vlogmas right now, but I have a video planned about books that I was assigned in school and never read, um, but definitely should have. And, uh, I was not into the assigned reading thing until about 11th grade. And in 11th grade, which is the second to last year of high school, so I was about 16, uh, 16, 17, I had a really, really amazing English teacher. And we did American Lit in 11th grade, and that's the year I read The Great Gatsby. That is the year I first discovered Hemingway. Um, that's the year I really learned about kind of annotating your reading and about writing about literature, and I really fell in love with it. In my la final year of high school, I had more or less the same experience. I had a really great teacher. I was kind of flippant about high school my last year. I just really didn't give any fucks anymore. Um, so again, a lot of assigned reading that just didn't get done. Um, but I, by then, had really fallen in love with words in a way that I hadn't before when I was reading. When I was reading before I was consuming stories, and I was still consuming stories at this point, but I was paying attention to how they were structured and I was paying attention to more of the subtleties of what was going on in the stories I was consuming. I got to college. I went into college as a declared biology major. I was going to be pre-med. My first semester of sophomore year, I switched my major to English Lit and I got a degree in English literature. Still, at this point, I am studying literature. I am making a conscious decision and spending a lot of money to study literature. And still, at this point, I am not doing <laughs> my science reading for class. But in general, I wasn't a great student in college. Um, I was not very studious. I was very distracted by other things. I had a lot, a lot of mental health issues in college. I had a really hard time adjusting. So I read the same books over and over and over again in college. I read This Lullaby by Sarah Dessen, which again is YA. I read that book probably 12 or 15 times over the course of my late high school years and early college years. I read the Harry Potter series I don't know how many times in college. I would just read it over and over again. I think at this point I've probably read that series start to finish upwards of 20 times. Not exaggerating. Um, and I think that that's because I was having mental health issues and I turned for those books as comfort reads, as something that I could identify with or lose myself in. And that was really important. I really, really fell in love with reading for pleasure again right after college. That's when I discovered John Irving. That's when I really discovered literary fiction as a genre. Um, I had read, most of what I had read up to that point was genre fiction. And for pleasure anyway, and discovering literary fiction was really impactful for me at that time. It's when, after, in the couple of years after college, is also when I discovered that I really enjoy reading classics, which I had resisted so hard in college, um, but that I really loved Dickens, for example, who I hated all through high school and college, and um, the Brontes and things like that, that I could read those books for pleasure and it was a lot easier on me when there wasn't, you know, a term paper looming at the end of the book. And that brings us to where we are now, where I, at this point on the date that I'm filming this, which is about the end of November, I have read 146 books this year. Um, all for pleasure, because I'm not in school anymore. And 
I hope that I continue to love reading and I hope that I continue to share my love of reading with the people around me. And this just is really rambly and you probably don't care that much about my childhood. So I'm going to go now. This tea is still too hot to drink. I brewed this cup of tea before I started filming this video and like I still can't even hold the mug in my hand. It's so hot. All right. I am out of here. I will see you all tomorrow with another vlog vlogmas video. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.